This is our Forex blog for May 15th, 2012. And like we do most days, we want to buy the strongest currencies versus the weak. Uh, and we want to sell the weakest currencies versus the strong. Our currency meter lets you see which currencies are strongest and weakest in real time. Our statistical models compare every currency to every other one. On the histogram on the top, uses five different tools and averages it together into one. Easy to read indicator. At and above the 80 line is extremely weak if it's red. Or if it's green, it's extremely strong. Underneath that, we have the 15-minute trend, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly. So the more trends that line up, the better you are. Uh, the weekly, monthly trends up. If you see a lot of weakness and it kind of subsides, uh, if the weekly, monthly trends up, it's more likely that the, the you know uh, real-time trend goes back up to up, uh, which you can see happen here. It also happened in the yen. Uh, the euro, which has a weekly, monthly trend that's down, has some brief strength. You know, it's been weak lately. And so it had a counter trend move up, and then it resumed its downtrend. Very high percentage of the 15-minute trends down because the daily or the weekly and monthly trends down. Good one to be selling against the stronger uh, dollar and yen. Uh, so let's take a look at the euro dollar chart. And you can see, especially when the currency breaks from above to below the hourly moving average, it's a pretty good place to get into the trade. You actually saw it somewhere around 7.30 showing up this week. Once it breaks the hourly right here, it's confirmed. It falls from 28.30 all the way down to 60. Huge um, 70 pip move. Now, a lot of people don't you know, know exactly when to get in and out, or if they don't have that, uh, they don't, aren't watching this and don't sell this hourly breakdown right here. There's not much uh, re-entry patterns until right here. And, and that's one of the reasons why I'm creating uh, tools that actually show you and give you signals to look for uh, buys or sales. So let me bring those up right now. Here is the euro dollar chart. And first of all, because the euro dollar is extremely weak uh, on the longer term chart, you know, we have some sell signals that are above the hourly. If the longer term trend was up, these signals would not exist here. And this one, you know, it just broke from underneath above the hourly. That's a bullish sign. So you you want to discretionarily trade these. Earlier in the day, if you see a signal like that, usually it might go to the next FIB area and then kind of run out of steam. So, you know, myself, I would have probably got into a trade here and started scaling in and made money here. Uh, and then I would have waited uh, for the sell signal here, which, you know, preceded this big drop. And it's got a sell signal here that worked, here that worked. And our lower containment bands usually at the end of the moves. And you always want to draw FIBs on the last wave. For the most part, this is very likely to be the maximum low because it's underneath the lower containment bands, Fibonacci profit target, first wave down, second, third, fourth wave. You know, it's likely to get some kind of a bounce. It really doesn't bounce that much. It does make another wave down. But I probably would have avoided these trades until, you know, the market. If, if the market goes up and it's not able to take out these highs, you know, I probably would not have sold these. I might have sold this, made a little bit, sold here and lost. This one would have lost and got short right here again at 27.90, and then the market, you know, took off uh, to the lows. You always want to draw your fibs on the last wave, and our 3.0 green band almost always is the ultimate end of the move. So if you sold this right here at 95, you're out of this at 56. You made 40-something pips. So if, even if you took every trade, you lose, let's say, 5 pips, you made 8 pips, uh, you made 10 pips, you lost 10, and then you made 40, obviously you have a profit there. And this one worked, and this one also worked. This one worked. Um, you know, if a, if a currency is extremely weak on the weekly and monthly trend, you might want to avoid the buys or wait for it to come down to the hourly, which is really a good support area. And then because it had some buy signals before, you wait for it to start to go above the previous bars high and get in here at 46. You can see it went up uh, almost 20 pips. Remember, the euro is extremely weak. The yen is also strong. The weekly monthly are strong. And this starts to really get strong here at 856. So this one, when it's underneath the hourly, you're mostly looking for sales. When it's above the hourly, you're mostly looking for buys. Um, the euro is extremely weak on the weekly monthly trend. The yen is extremely strong, just like the dollar in the weekly monthly trend. Unfortunately, this did not give any sell signals here. But towards the low right here, it has, you know, two small wins. This one lost. Um, most of the time when the market is trending down, it will make at least an Elliott two-wave pullback. So I'm 
If I did take this trade right here and lost, I'd scale into a trade right here and make 10, 15 pips uh, short here. And when anytime, one of the simple rules of trading, which unfortunately I don't go over that much because we have more sophisticated methods, is a downtrend is a series of lower lows and lower highs. It, you know, you can see it's making lower lows, lower high than this, lower low, lower high. Uh, but this is the first time that it didn't take out the slow. So this is the first possible reversal. When it comes up and makes a higher high, uh, you don't know that it's going to reverse. Here it comes down and makes a, a higher low. And then on this one, it comes up and doesn't even hit this level. So this is a relatively safe place to sell. But on the way down, it doesn't take out that low. So it's very likely it's going to reverse up. So I wouldn't take this trade right here. Um, you want to draw your fibs on this next uh, first wave right here. And the fib target is right near the hourly, which is right, also right near the 15-minute uh, uh, moving average and there's a half number here which tends to have big buy and sell orders clumped coming up to it from underneath there's sell orders coming down to it from above there's typically buy orders uh, and so this was a very high probability place to sell and you can see it fell from 50 all the way down to 10 it fell 40 pips so by using the currency meter to identify the currency and then just simple common sense you know rules on whether which trades to take and which ones not uh, let's go look at some other examples for uh, the next one you can also see the Swiss as a weekly monthly trend that's down and the uh, intraday trend is up until about a little bit before 7.30 right here and you can see the 15 minute trend shifts down. Usually real time shifts first, then the 15, then the hourly. If the daily's up, it takes it a little bit longer. You can see they all start to flip right here around 8.30. So the dollar is extremely strong. The Swiss is weak. That means you want to buy the dollar Swiss. Now, if you don't know when to buy uh, in to get into trades if you miss the first wave up this you know our um, alert indicators let you know when there's relatively high probability patterns on the chart to look for entries okay so here's the dollar Swiss chart five pips per bar and when it's underneath the hourly you're you're mainly looking for sales uh, you always want to keep in 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 context what the range is you also want to look at what the weekly monthly trend is if you're looking for selling a currency that's this strong in the weekly and monthly trend and the daily trend just shifted down, you know, it's got a much lower chance of working. You're much better off waiting for it to hit the hourly and if it can't get above there, sell. Uh, for instance, right here, if you had sold right here, it doesn't pull back, you put your stop over the high, you have a small loss. When it breaks out of this, because it's in all the trends is up, you buy and here's your first pullback trade that went up. And having an entry like this, if you see a double bottom right there, which in some cases doesn't uh, produce a, a buy signal. Uh, you want to basically, uh, seeing a buy signal right here, if it doesn't break the low, you want to buy. Uh, and you can see it went up to the 3.0 green band, which you saw on the other chart was the low uh, of the euro dollar or euro. I can't remember which one. So you can see this next wave, you know, went up another 20 pips. And on range charts, you can actually spot little pauses like this, draw your fibs on there and it gives a really good Fibonacci profit target which also happens to be right at our bands notice it touched it to the pip if you don't have a range chart you're not really going to probably even know to draw a fib on this last little pause area you know markets that go up ex go sideways and then explode up uh, typically you're not going to even see that little pause on a five minute chart so uh, it's also a perfect way of picking the exit place Last but not least, the New Zealand was extremely weak across the board, and the dollar and the yen are both strong. So you want to sell the New Zealand dollar, you want to sell the New Zealand yen. When all the time frames line up like that, you really have a pretty high probability uh, you know, for selling. You can see this one just broke above the hourly, so it's kind of risky to sell it you know, right when it breaks out from below to above the hourly. Uh, you know, this code is looking for certain chart patterns, and in some cases, if the currency is this week, which you can see it is, I put sell signals on. If it wasn't this week on a daily, weekly, monthly trend, then I would not be putting these counter trend signals on there. So, again, if you take a trade here and you lose 10 pips, and you draw your fibs on that, usually the next fib level up. This is where I have been recently using these to scale into much bigger positions in the initial loss. And let's say you have a double-sized position right here. Uh, it pulls back 15 pips, that's equivalent to 30 pips. So if you lose 8 pips and then make the equivalent of 30 pips because you have a bigger position, 
because this one's so weak on the daily, weekly, monthly trend, your net is up 22 pips on those two trades. Let's get rid of the fibs here. And you can see as this is trending down, you have a sell right here, and it starts to come down. I would be moving my stop down. I'd lose five pips on that one. This one comes up. And we don't have our real-time tools on here because I didn't uh, leave this running last night. But when this sell signal here happens, you can see it pretty much comes down 10, 15 pips. If you wanted to get out of that trade, that's fine. If you, you know, or if you see that sell signal here and it doesn't, uh, it makes a lower low right here. It's not able to, to go back up. You sell it again, and you can see it came down to, again to the 3.0 green band. And in this particular case, I also have a, a buy counter trend signal because it's down so much, and certain chart patterns happened uh, that it triggered a buy, which you know led to a nice little 15 pip move up. Usually, you can scale into a pretty big position here. Let's just say you have a 25, 50 thousand dollar account. You might buy five or six lots here if it goes down to wherever the next fib target is. You know, it very rarely does. But if it does, you might add another 10 lots, which would average your price down. If it moved up six, seven pips, you would break even. If it shoots up 30 pips, you have a massive position. And, you know, I do a lot of counter trend trades that way, especially when they're beyond the, the 3.0 green band. Usually they don't go beyond that. But even if you had five lots right here, it goes up 20, uh, 20 pips. That's $1,000 right there. Um, and you can always, you know, buy the next pullback if I don't have the real time uh tools on here if it was extremely weak on the way down rallied up and came down the next time with less momentum than the first wave typically it's going to reverse up to the fib target off of this wave here which you can see that's exactly where it stopped so buying this at 20 you have another 20 pips there on the next wave let's show the new zealand yen to end today's class here's a new zealand yen and you know it's just kind of chopping around here you started trading in, in the middle of the European session, you have a sell right here, but the hourly is just really close to it. You might want to kind of wait and see if it can get above the hourly. It can't right here and you go short. Or if you took a loss right here, you lost 10 pips, you know, add a little bit more to your lot size, 50% more. You lose, let's say, with one lot and you lose 10 pips, you're down 100. You do one and a half lots right here, it pulls back uh, eight or nine pips. That's equivalent to 14. You're up 140, so you're up 40. Another sell signal here, which is bigger, much higher probability reversal. You get short somewhere around 62. You always want to draw your fibs on the last wave to get an idea of where your profit target is. And you can see usually it stops at the first or second fib target. Rarely does it go beyond that. So that's exactly where it came down to. And you're out with a very nice uh, maybe 30 pip profit. You wouldn't want to sell right here because it's already fallen too much. This signal it really looks for... Uh, these kind of patterns kind of closer to the middle of the range. When it's at the FIB target, it's much less likely to work. So this is where learning our entry methods helps you. These are just looking for certain bar patterns. Draw your FIBs on there. And I would much prefer getting short at an Elliott two-wave pullback, uh, getting into a trade here, scaling in a little bit, and as it comes down, getting out uh, with a very nice uh, profit on that trade.